Wow, that was the Flying Scotsman. Welcome to Partick Hill Station. Hello and welcome back to Partick Hill Station. I'm Charlie. Uh, yes, I've been absent from the station uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, we were down in Florida and California trying to escape winter. But as it happened, winter never happened here in Ontario. Uh, I'd paid a guy uh, to clear the driveway while we were away, uh, but he only had to come once. So that was a lot of money to pay the guy just to get out of bed once. Um, so now we're approaching the middle of March and... You know, there's no sign uh, in the immediate future of any large uh, snowfalls. But anyway, uh, as I say, I'm back at the station now and thought we might just have a look at some magazines. And we we'll start off with this one, Model Railway Constructor, uh, which is by Ian Allen. And it was issued October 1986 for the princely sum of one pound. So let's have a look inside. There you go, Hattons, who are no longer with us, but, you know, back in those days, uh, you could get an R671 country local train set for £36.50. Now, that's a pretty good price. And there's a Jubilee Fowler Tender BR Black. Um, this is from Mainline for £25.95. Those were the days, as they would say. So here we have... Uh, in the top picture, the Preserved Railways Demonstrations goods train runs along the quay approaching uh, Thailand Junction as a BR rail car departs in the background. And in the bottom photograph here uh, is an RLS 5900, the prototype Rayleigh's scrap carrier is seen here at Hu Junction in August 1979. By this time, it had already lost its top, uh, sorry, it had already lost its top capping and the side door had been rehung to drop down. Details in the text. Uh, the livery illustrated is, however, original. And there's a uh, comment contents and, and then more uh, listings from the various uh, providers. <clears throat> and here's an interesting one. Uh, it's entitled Moulding a Princess. In a review of the Hornby Princess Elizabeth MRC September, we mentioned the mould parting line on the boiler top of the Hornby model. Richard Lyons of Hornby has drawn our attention to the accompanying photograph, which actually loaned to Hornby by the Ian Allen Library during their research for the model. Number 46201 is clearly seen to have a mould parting line along the boiler top. Did Stanier serve his apprenticeship at Margate rather than Swindon? And was there perhaps an electric motor in the tender and a smoke unit? How about that? That's funny. And here's a list of uh, shore guides, including the Worley Model Railway Club. And the Black Dog Project by Chris Lee here 
describing how after you built uh, the tables, you could then begin to uh, landscape um, the tables themselves in different ways using different materials. And a constructor's review of the Southern Pride bullied coach kits. <clears throat> now here's an interesting one. I'm sure many would be interested in seeing or reading this. Uh, the Gronk, as it's uh, commonly referred to. Super strong pulling power from Hornby. Now, all of you guys out there who has this model should be able to comment on this. Um, so let's just have a, a, a brief overview of it. <clears throat> so at 18 pound 99 pence the new Hornby 060 chassis design which made its first appearance last year under Thomas the Tank engine oh that's interesting has now started to be used under other models in the Hornby range and the first to be received is the reissued uh, <clears throat> 08 review sample Hornby brand manager Simon Kohler issued a stern warning. If you use the drawbar test rig of yours, make sure it's securely anchored to the wall. Ha ha. We could hardly wait to put, put that to a challenge or put that challenge to test. So Hornby supplied two samples of the new 08 uh, model, one of them wired in reverse to facilitate a tug of war. All right, so let's just go through this. Hornby's press release points out the importance of correct balancing to obtain optimum power from the chassis, noting that the aim has been to produce good haulage capacity and electrical pickup with low weight and cost. The sprung axle ensures that the four pickup wheels are in constant contact with the track and the wiper pickups remain in contact with the wheels even when the springs are at their maximum travel. Good electrical pickup has thus been achieved. Is that true? I can't really say because I don't have that model. Incorrect balancing of the body could affect the balancing of the sprung axle and cause the powered wheels to lift. So the weighting arrangements <coughs> excuse me, for each body will be different. The 08 body moulding has two small metal weights glued inside and the total body weight is just 56 grams. Indeed, the complete locomotive, including chassis, weighs only 184 grams. Some 11 grams less than Dapol's powerful J94. Modelers using the, uh, this chassis under kits or other bodies will need to carry out some careful tests before installing weights. <clears throat> so to go on, running with our standard H&M Powermaster was noticeably smoother than the earlier Hornby chassis due no doubt to the improved pickup arrangement. Slow running ability was also quite reasonable and the model was almost silent in operation. The drawbar test was a crucial one. However, locomotives of 060 wheel arrangement generally do not perform too well on this test. Hornby's older chassis actually failed to register at all, while one of the record holders, Dapol's J94, which managed pulls of between 4 to 20 grams. 
on the H&M controller, the new Hornby model consistently pulled a massive 80 grams before losing its grip. We next tried the H&M walkabout controller, which has inertia setting as well as a straight control arrangement. This unit gave improved slow speed running, but reduced the drawbar test pull to 60 grams. Still a very good figure. However, with the inertia in operation and full power applied on the drawbar test, the motor quickly overheated. Our final tests were carried out with a standard AMR feedback controller. On this unit, the chassis appeared quieter and freer running than with the walkabout. Even at the slowest speed, there was very little noise and operation was positive down to a crawl. Indeed, one could be happy with this controller and chassis combination. Right? Shunting for hours at speeds for more gentle uh, sorry, shunting for hours at speeds far more gentle than those practiced by many a BR shunter. The smoothness and slow running was up to the standard of many a fine scale model. On the drawbar test, the 60 gram mark was reached consistently. This is certainly a very well engineered chassis and is mechanically one of the best we have examined in a British outline model. Certainly superior to many of the Far East produced products of recent years. We eagerly await its installation under a superior steam locomotive. So <clears throat> it would be interesting to hear back from any of you guys who have this particular model and uh, you know, maybe you can confirm <clears throat> uh, the contents of this test. Interesting, though. And here's some real modelling if you want to build a, uh, your own local. A lengthy article. And now we have uh, an article on modern PO wagons, <clears throat> rail ease POA open scrap carriers. <clears throat> and this would be of interest to uh, those who have this particular wagon. Uh, as you see, there is a, a, a complete engineering drawing uh, to scale, which is always a good thing especially when you're uh, trying to upgrade uh, the model that you have. But that's, that is a, a great drawing. So, you know, if any of you have uh, this particular model and uh, you'd like to receive uh, that drawing uh, for purposes of making modifications, please let me know and I'd be happy to fax it to you or attach it to an email um, in fact I could do the whole article for you if you if you requested so and you know here's another drawing so this is uh, 50 51 ton POA two axle two axle open scrap carrier two different drawings uh, I'd have to take a closer look to see what the difference is oh well the one thing is uh, they don't show the uh, the ladder here so that's one difference anyway if you're interested in in receiving this as I say please get back to me and there's a Talon Junction 4mm fine scale layout Nice little end to end, but not little. It's 15 feet long and, of course, two feet wide. And nice uh, finishing here in the landscape. The trees and bushes and buildings. Very nice. 
and more details here. And there's uh, an article on modeling techniques for a plastic teak. They go into great detail in in these articles. They put a lot of effort into it. And you end up with a fine example of uh, a, a three axle a teak coach canals <clears throat> well many of you out there have canals on your layout and uh, I'm sure this would be an interesting article for you with the reference material shown here in uh, in these photographs plus uh, an engineering sketch of the layout. Although, <clears throat> although it, it says here not to scale. Yeah, it's a quite comprehensive uh, article. And this is uh, between Sheffield and South Yorkshire Canal. top gates of Thorns Lock showing the paddle gear again together with the arrangement of footboards and handrails. Neat stone steps here provide unusually easy access to the footboards. And there's the example of a, a, a narrow boat uh, going there. Okay, so here's Triang TT part one. Collector's Corner, and this is the article by Pat Hammond. And it starts out by saying, For me, the charm of Triang TT has been its close resemblance to Triang Double O, but in a smaller size. It has the appeal of a puppy compared with a fully grown dog. So I wonder what that, how that would be compared with today's TT120. The Altebrig and Mingle Sees the Light by Alan Gibson. Looks like a brass construction. Now this is real engineering, right? This is real model making. I've never done this type of work, but I like looking at them whenever I go to any of the shows. And here's some details for the modeler. m and &E Local Works. Taken in the 1950s of a 10-ton tool van. Seems... It appears to be a conversion of a GWR diagram V7 Mink C of 1907 vintage, having a 12-foot wheelbase. Once again, terrific modelling material. And the ever-present um, lists from the various stores, shops, and that's a, a continuation of that article on the, on the teak coach. The New Lima Intercity. So once again, that's October 1986, it sold for a pound. Now here's an interesting one, Model Rail, for modellers of the diesel and electric era, supplement number 41, July 1994. Now I think I have a couple of these lying around, 
and I found this one which I thought would be interesting because <clears throat> it has some notes on Going Loco's new Class 37 slash 9 detail kit and Lima Society launched wagon kit share appeal. Okay, so let's have a look. Now there's that class 37. <clears throat> the inter this enterprising new kit priced at £4.95 is available direct from Going Local at 25 Orchard Crescent, Stevenage. Telephone number 0438 354 774. I wonder if they still have that in stock and how much it would cost for this conversion kit. And there's a modern station from Kestrel Designs at £5.95. And here is the Abyssgale JHA Wagon Project. They say it's a high quality kit. And it's from uh, Partside Dundas has already been approached to undertake the main body and underframe moulding. To tool up for such a kit will cost in the region of £5,000. So there you go. This is back in 94. £5,000 was a fair amount of money. And it gives you an idea into the costs for any venture to get the, the dies made for uh, a new model. <clears throat> so they, they had an incentive for every £10 share purchased, the modeler will receive one wagon kit free of charge when the kit is purchased. After that, investors will be entitled to further kits at reduced prices. A full re retail price of £9.95 per kit has already been penciled in, but a bulk rate will be available for those purchasing in quantity. So that's a, a good way of uh, of getting funding uh, for the pr production dies. Do any of you out there have that model? Now what I like about this uh, supplement is the artwork done, in this case by John Emerson, <clears throat> in the line side look. And it's a, a regular series of hints and tips uh, for a terrace type house. So you could take that and scale it up uh, to whatever scale you're, you're working on, two millimetres or four millimetres. You could just take the height of the door, which you could say seven feet um, or six foot eight and then scale everything up from there. And there's Tornbridge West Yard. That's quite an extensive... Uh, Fiddle yard, and there's the stop list for this particular layout. Certainly, a nice looking layout with. Uh, 
a great selection of rolling stock. Let's see if we've got one more. <clears throat> I think we've done this one. Once again, it's a model railway constructor by Ian Allen. This is a special uh, number four on buildings. And as an introduction and a guide to architectural style, as you can see here. And then it goes on uh, in greater detail with the type of bonding that is used in the building industry and some examples of uh, towns and cities and the backyard lane and he gives a description of the various types of roof arrangements signal boxes, tools and materials, and then he goes through the process of marking it out and cutting. All the basic instructions that you really need to understand and and know the various techniques and best practices. Showing you how to uh, cut the opening for windows or doors. Station buildings. Quite a variety here. And once again, you know, if you're interested in any of this material, just drop me a note. I'd be happy to uh, uh, copy and forward to you. And here's a terrific construction technique uh, used to build uh, windows. And there's a hip a ridge roof. Nice buildings and a variety too. Chimneys, gutters and fittings. You see, I think they were finials. I think that was their name. Pub buildings. Well, we're all familiar with those. I wonder if, if any of them was your local and might still be. <laughs> and then he gets into buildings from kits. And how to build a platform. And special effects. That would be an interesting article uh, to read through. They're uh, detailing inside the building. Great reference material, this. And there's the checkerboard floor. So 
So as, as you can see, it takes you through the whole process. It'd be very useful. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, that read. And uh, once again, if you're interested in any uh, any content from these uh, magazines, please let me know. And uh, I'll be seeing you soon uh, with a video from uh, Southern California uh, that I hope to get up within the next few days. And uh, if you enjoyed this, remember to give me the big thumbs up. You know how it works. And yeah, press that button. Doesn't cost you anything. You know how it goes. And we'll see you next time here at Partick Hill Station. Bye for now.